So in the last video, we ended by talking about the fact that we can compute a firing uh, vector for a data flow graph using linear programming. But once we get the firing vector, we've just got this unordered sequence of events that we know has some nice properties we want, like the fact that everything happens at least once, um, and that the total amount of data in buffers over the firing won't change. But there's data dependencies between the nodes in the data flow graph. So for example, uh, you know, if you look at this adder, it needs one piece of data from the up sample and one piece of data from the multiply before it can fire. So you can't just start a firing sequence by executing the adder. You have to go through and find the right sequence of guys in this cloud of possible operations and then repeat that specific sequence over and over again. So how do we order the firing vector? Well, there's a lot of different ways, um, and computing schedules and data flow is a huge topic, but here's a really simple way that works for data flow graphs that are directed acyclic graphs, like the one we're looking at. And it's basically just do a topological sort. So we're gonna pick a node that can fire, fire it, and then repeat until the sequence is finished. And a critical detail here is that we're going to assume that incoming edges from the outside world that are not connected to any other nodes um, always have the required data on them at the start. So, uh, and actually at any time. But anyway, we're going to pick a node that can fire, fire it, and then repeat until the sequence is finished. So as a start, we could start by firing our upsample node. So when we fire the upsample, uh, it's got no dependencies inside the data flow graph, so we can just fire it, and we can put two buffers, or two tokens inside this buffer going to the adder. Now the adder can't fire yet because it doesn't have enough data in its buffer, it needs one piece of data from the multiplier, but the multiplier has no dependencies, so we can fire it. Okay, now that we've fired the multiplier, we've got one piece of data in this FIFO and two in this FIFO, so the adder can fire, and the adder can consume the data, uh, or one piece of data from each of these FIFOs, leaving one piece of data in the upsample FIFO and no data in the multiply to add FIFO. So now we can ex apply, execute the multiply again, because the multiply channel uh, or the multiply outgoing edge FIFO is empty, so it's ready to receive data, and multiply has no data dependencies. So we fire the multiplier, we put a single piece of data into the FIFO, and now we're ready to fire the adder again and consume the last two pieces of data. And if you think about it, um, that's exactly the sequence we originally had, right? We do the upsample, multiply, add, multiply, add. And actually, you know, um, this is a perfectly good sequence. It has all the properties we want. And of course, it preserves the requirement about number of relative firings that we got through our linear programming problem. So that's the basic idea of synchronous data flow. And like I said, there's a lot of extensions to deal with things like scheduling when there are cycles in the graph or finding optimal throughputs and optimal firing rates. Took a sip of tea there. So there's a lot of uh, variations on synchronous data flow. But the big idea to take away is that in SDF, and this is an idea that goes beyond the specific mathematical formalism or any particular scheduling method, the big insight in SDF is that when you're scheduling a hardware design, you want to build the schedule for the design out of sequences of events with two properties. One is that every event executes at least once, so there's not going to be starvation. And the other is that the total amount of data in the buffers in the system is constant from the start to the end. So maybe some you know, pieces of or data are produced internally in the sequence, but they're consumed later on. And if you find a sequence that has these properties, you found a sequence where there's no starvation that can be repeated over and over and over again ad infinitum. And that's really the core insight of SDF. And SDF is a very old technique. It's a little bit out of fashion. Um, but it's the grandfather of a lot of different scheduling methods, and it contains the kernel of a really, really good idea about how to do hardware scheduling. Well, that's all for now, and I'll see you in the next video.